All right, I'm going to tell the latest of this Caitlin Clark Olympic story through a few comments. The first one, as you can see, my beautiful face in a um, awkward position, I would say, is fair. Uh, but the, the comment I opened the show with the other day said, are you so stupid that you think Nike, Gatorade, Wilson are going to leave her off the team? You are a clickbait idiot. Unsubscribe. I talked about that topic because I thought it was interesting. And yes, I thought there was a chance they would leave Caitlin Clark off the Olympic team reading the tea leaves. I actually got that idea from AJ Schreiber in the comment section, the idea to do that subject that day, who wrote, even if she gets selected, I think she would get the same treatment that LBJ and other rookies got on the 04 men's team. She wouldn't be in the regular lineup. It's in her best interest to stay home. Now, let me go back in time for a second to that LeBron 04 US team because it hits a note for me considering I was upset at the time. I vividly remember that. I vividly remember screaming at Larry Brown to put LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Carmelo Anthony into the game as they were getting white by Puerto Rico. I was in a small New York apartment. My roommate was actually a mime. My room was too small to fit the, the TVs of the time in. I had the door open with the TV on the outside, screaming at Larry Brown. Put LeBron in the game. And sure enough, AJ kind of called the latest reports as well, which say that the reason Caitlin Clark may have been left off the U.S. Olympic team is because of that. Christine Brennan with the report. Two other sources, both longtime U.S. basketball veterans with decades of experience in the women's game, told USA Today Sports Friday that concern over how Clark's millions of fans would react to what would likely be limited playing time on a stacked roster was a factor in the decision-making. Goes into the, the obvious tensions that that would be proof of with Clark and the, the notoriety and the fan base that has come along with her. And look, it's whack. Everybody's got to get over it. It's whack. I, I've, I've said it a million times. I don't think the other women should be degraded or talked down or, or not given their due respect. You know, I have people in the, the comment section of the last video talking about players who shouldn't be on the team. Diana Tarazi, yeah, she's not in her absolute prime, but she's a legend. And she just put up buckets the other day. You know, Arike Agumbawale isn't even on the team. And you could argue she's a huge snub, obviously. And then some of the players who are on the team, Brittany Griner, there's a whole political lightning rod aspect to that. But it's pointless. Who cares? It has nothing to do with this. You know, Chelsea Gray has been injured. So maybe Clark gets on the team as an injury replacement, by the way, and they wanted to give Chelsea Gray her proper respect because she's a dynamic bowler. My point simply was that the ladies, the women who have made the team are deserving. And they're established. So I, I don't need to tear them down to, to try to prop Caitlin Clark up. And as far as the, the fans thing go, I've made videos talking about the fans and how they can be too much, whatever. But everybody's going to deal. Caitlin's got to deal with it and go out there and play with everybody talking about her. She's doing okay. And as far as the playing time aspect of it goes, look, the, the U.S. was going to win gold. They, they're, they always, they're, they're a stacked squad a great team full of great hoopers across the board. But there's an easy way to solve the playing time issue too, and that's to play her. You could play. Okay, look, she didn't have to play the whole game, but she could play enough where fans are invested in watching her play in the individual games. Because here's the secret. You guys want to know the secret? Everybody likes watching her play. That's why she's popular. I'm so sick. Of every other, it's all this nonsense, this toxic drama discourse, right? Like trying to make it into a race war or lesbian war, whatever the case may be. And using it, people using it to their advantage for engagement and all that. The truth of the matter is this. The overwhelming majority, if not everybody, likes watching her play. She's exciting to watch. What she did against the Mystics was objective. It's exciting to watch. She's pulling up from the logo like Steph Curry. She's keeping her dribble alive in the lane like Steve Nash. She's passing the ball up ahead like Jason Kidd. 
She makes you go, who? The stuff you can't control. You can't control. And whether that's black, white, straight, gay, whoever, everybody likes watching her. The numbers would not be what they were if that wasn't the case. Those are not imaginary. Like 18 million people watching the national championship game and all the people who have watched the WNBA this season and all the people that bought the tickets to that arena. It's not imaginary. Those people exist. So the people who are being said to be against her are not actually representative of the greater group because everybody's rooting for her in general, in broad brushstrokes terms. So it's whack that this stuff takes over all the time. Now, I found this interesting. Sabrina Ionescu, apparently on uh, the broadcast of the Liberty game, this might have been said. She said, um, see if I can get that on the screen for you. Sabrina Ionescu, update, announcer in Liberty game says, Sabrina told her that the official Team USA roster will be announced on Tuesday. So maybe, you know, we have a Cody Rhodes situation going on here. A we want Cody <laughs> movement for Caitlin Clark. We want Caitlin. Because that could, I could see that happening. I could see the injury replacement news. You know, but I'm not going to sit here and, and go back and forth on the credentials of the other women. It's just, you you got to know the NBC partners, the Olympic sponsors are all going to want to see Caitlin Clark there. She's the biggest athlete in the country right now. She's talked about every single day. This topic, until there's a resolution, is going to be like the number one topic, period. Not just in sports, but period. Look what happened last week with, with Caitlin Clark. And, and look, if she gets the rest, maybe she comes back and plays better after the you know break and, and into the WNBA season. But I, I think all of this can be easily solved. Everybody deals with it. She gets on the team. You give her some playing time. And you, you benefit everybody. Hell, you know, there's an argument to be made to put Angel Reese on the team, given the, the movement we're at right now and, and how popular she is in her own right. I mean, it just, it feels short-sighted, obviously. But maybe with Sabrina, I, had, I have to confirm that myself um, from the broadcast, but maybe that is, is something that um, could give us a hint that this might actually change. And we have a, a we want Caitlin movement that is successful the way we want Cody was successful for, for Cody Rhodes and, and his fans heading into WWE WrestleMania. The Cody crybabies, they called them, The Rock did. Maybe people will call uh, everybody the Caitlin crybabies. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens. And until then, everybody's going to be talking about it.